All right, we are on. Happiness Aid live group. Hope you guys are doing well. I think we're into week number eight, or week number seven, except we've had some big announcements over the past 24 hours, especially the industry that I'm in. So I'm gonna go through with, that with you guys today. I'm going to uh, give you guys a bit of the background of my experience going through COVID over the past um, seven weeks or so, being at home, how I've dealt with that, how I've helped it uh, to my advantage, and hopefully um, I can give you guys some good insights to that. Be able to share some information, and of course, if you guys have questions, make sure to put them in. Let's make it a little bit interactive, because I know that the guys here at Happiness Co. through Happiness A have done a really good job of bringing you guys together, and it's just a privilege for me to be a part of that. So thank you guys so much for having me. And before I kick off, for those who don't know me, um, I'm Brendan McCormack. Um, you see my name down there. Um, so I'm the founder of Perth Fit Fam and Fit Fam Finder. So uh, a lot of you guys, if you're based in WA, you've probably seen some of our stuff before. So Perth Fit Fam was the first of its kind, really bringing together a local fitness community. Um, and hopefully you guys have uh, seen some of the work that we've done over the past four years and what we've been able to achieve to be able to bring communities together within the fitness space. Um, you know, much like what the guys from Happiness Co have done to create an awesome community uh, within the mental health space and um, just that personal development space. So uh, I really do look up to Jules. I think that him and Robbie have done a great job. And like I said, it's a pleasure for me to, to be a part of this. Uh, again, if you have any questions through this, feel free, put them down, chuck them down. I'll answer them as we go. Um, but time to kick this off. So. Outside of the background of who I am and some of the things that I've done, so uh, me as a person, I've been in the fitness space, I've often found it beneficial to do personal challenges, and for me, they're, they're, they're usually things that are a little bit in the extreme, uh, which caused me to get out of my comfort zone, um, and they're usually things that people wouldn't do, um, so, so hard or large tasks. So the one last year for me, my, my challenge for the year was to do a 24 hour obstacle course race, um, which was going through the night um, and uh, 100 kilometers throughout that time. I've done like 12 months of extreme dieting to do different tests of things and then just even little challenges. So I used to wear a baseball cap for the majority of my adult life to cover my bald little head. So I even had a personal challenge, which was, um, to become a proud bald man. So one of my challenges this uh, one year was simply to do that. So I like to put myself out of my comfort zone. And it was the same thing when COVID came about. So about seven, eight weeks ago, um, you know, COVID in Australia went from being a meme to actually being something serious. And we didn't know how serious it would be at the time, um, but we did know that the country would eventually go into lockdown. So when COVID came about, I knew that we would go into lockdown and I took some time to think about the situation and what that would mean to me and how that might impact me. And I decided to put myself in isolation early. I didn't want to be reactive to the situation. I wanted to be proactive to the situation. And I just said to my wife, who's on the, uh, who's on the live now, I said, I'm gonna put myself into isolation early and I'm gonna make a promise to myself that I'm going to be fitter than when I started and I'm gonna be better off financially. So the two things, I was gonna be better off physically, better off financially, and that gave me the triggers to be able to move forward. And what that did, the first point which I was gonna talk about in this live was really simply um, focus on the things that you can control, take ownership of those things, and don't focus on the things that you can't control. So the things that I knew I could control was that I knew that I could train every day. I knew that even if I didn't have all the equipment, if I didn't have the community, um, I could do everything. So the challenge to myself was to do a workout every single day, no matter what minimal piece of equipment that I had. And for me to begin with, that was a 24 kilo kettlebell. So although that wasn't optimal to be able to get the results that I could have got in a gym, it was just taking advantage of the things that I had access to at that point in time. Um, and even then, Having that challenge of only having minute piece of equipment to be able to get those results, for me, again, it stimulated that sense of challenge, it stimulated that sense of adversity, and it gave me something to go after. So that was really, really powerful for me. 
Now, within fitness and wanting to be fitter than when I came out, I knew that if I was to eat all my meals and if I was to track my meals or track my calories, so for those who are in fitness, you're probably familiar with my fitness pal. For those who aren't in fitness, it's simply just an app where you log your meals regularly. And I knew if I was to do my workout and I was to track my meals and stick to my targets, then I would come out of this fitter than when I began. And they were two simple variables which I was able to control which would give me the outcome that I wanted to, even though I had minimal to no equipment. And I think that can be applied in any stage or any area where you are. You might have been disadvantaged through this time. Um, you know, obviously people not being able to work in offices, limited ability to go see friends and family. But rather than focusing on those things, you could really, do, you could really focus on the things that you had control of at that point in time. Now, the other thing was financially for us. So I wanted to be better off financially than when I started. Obviously, there was a lot of jobs being laid off. Um, you know, it's hard to get work at this stage. And it really caused people to innovate where they were at. So for the first two weeks, we spent a lot of time working with gym owners and PTs, that's the industry that I'm in, and helping them guide them through the process we, where they were at to be able to innovate through this stage. And through that, we were also able to innovate our business as well. And we were able to create a product or a service within this stage, which was providing value for those businesses, uh, for those trainers, for those gym owners, to be able to get them through the process, but able to innovate our business and move that forward too. So they were the two things that I was able to focus on over the past seven weeks which really helped me reach those goals, gave me something to strive for every day, um, and actually helped me turn this process into a really beneficial time. Um, now, outside of that, you really gotta do with whatever you've got and embrace those challenges. So like I said, every, time, every single year, I will put myself in a situation where it will take me out of my comfort zone to embrace a challenge or embrace the adversity of what was to come. So for instance, doing the 24 hour race. Now I'm not a runner, I'm a fitness person, but I'm not a trained runner, nor did I train like a trained runner to be able to do that. But I did have steps leading in that process to be able to get to a fitness level to be able to complete that. Um, the same thing this year, my challenge was to do the port to pub. Unfortunately, that got canceled two days out, except I'm scared of sharks. And that was part of the adversity to be able to move forward um, and learn how to swim and then learn how to swim in uh, ocean water and get over that fear which was holding me back of being able to swim with sharks. So although I didn't get to complete that challenge, I was able to uh, uh, overcome those fears to be able to do that. And I also found the same thing in this situation. Again, it was the challenge of uh, being able to be fitter, although I didn't have access to all the equipment. That challenge, it actually pushed me to do better than if I were to be training within the gym. Um, the, the challenge and embracing the challenge of the adversity of, okay, business is shutting down, we're, we're going through a recession right now, but what can I do? What can I change to be able to grow? Where can I focus? Because you're gonna have a decision. Are you gonna sit back and do nothing? Or are you going to move forward, embrace the challenge and use that to bring out the best in you and help bring out the best in the people around you? Um, so I'm not sure about you guys, but Again, I really wanted to use this time to become better and use it as an opportunity to become a better version of myself. And I don't feel like the time was as restrictive as what we first thought that it could have been. Um, we had access to so many different tools. We were able to utilize things like Zoom to do uh, calls. Even though social distancing was there, you were still able to utilize tools to be able to connect with people. And I feel like for myself, it just showcased how efficient I can be in life and how efficient I can be uh, doing things if you need to think to be able to do it. You can save time. Um, you can connect with people in different sorts of ways. Um, and I feel like that a lot of businesses, they might have the same effect out of this as well, is that they will be really thinking about how they structure things, how they do things. The amount of gyms, the amount of trainers that I've seen come out of this better off than when they started, because it forced them to innovate. It forced them to think of something new. So many people wanted to go online. This was the trigger. This is what caused them to go online and they've done a good job of it. And all of a sudden they've created a completely new market purely because they were forced to be able to do that. Um, I see Ivan's in at the moment. Um, so Ivan from F45, I know that the guys at F45 Big Park 
have done an exceptional job in leading the way of being able to bring their community online to be able to help people out. Um, and I think that we're gonna be able to utilize a lot of these skills as we move forward out of isolation. Now, the final thing is, for me, when this started and I took a week off social media. So I'm, I'm usually very active in social media and before the lockdown was announced, there were so many different things floating around and I decided that it wasn't good for my mental health to be able to absorb all of that information that was out there. So I ended up just taking a week off, not going through Facebook, not posting on Instagram and really collecting my thoughts of what this meant to me and how I was going to approach it. And the night before actually 15 minutes before they announced gyms were gonna close, I put out an announcement and it was basically a warning to gyms because I saw that people weren't really taking the, the, they weren't really taking what was happening seriously and they were looking to react to the situation, which wasn't gonna put them in a good place. So they were looking to react um, rather than being proactive or looking to find loopholes in this situation. And for me, I needed to put out a warning to let people know that, hey, this is gonna happen. Like, your gym is about to shut down. If you haven't put a contingency plan in place, then you're already gonna to be too far behind. So I put out that, that message. You can still see it on my feed. I think it's posted there somewhere else, somewhere along it. And within 15 minutes, that's when they announced that the next day, gyms were gonna be shut down, and gyms were gonna be closed. And from there, I, I made a decision being someone who's a thought leader within the space that I was gonna showcase people how I went about this. So I was gonna showcase people that I was adapting, that I was gonna be better, that I was gonna train with whatever I had. I was gonna make do of the situation, whatever, whatever I could do. And I'm not usually one to post my workouts, but that's where I started. I just started posting my workouts on my stories and occasionally on my feed. And I was surprised to see the engagement and the messages that I got back from people just saying thank you or doing the workouts and tagging me in it and being inspired. And I really think that you guys had the opportunity to do the same thing over the past seven weeks is you could sit back and that's cool, that's fine if that's the way of adapting, or you really could have stepped up to be able to do something can showcase and inspire people to do the same thing. And I definitely chose uh, the latter to be able to do that. And I can look back on the seven weeks, being really proud of how I approached this situation, how I made the most out of it. And looking back, knowing that I'm the kind of person that is going to perform when things aren't so good. So this was a little challenge that I took on. And if I gave myself a score, I would score myself pretty good. And I hope that you guys took that challenge too to be able to score yourself pretty good and to be able to learn from it. So things have changed in the past 24 hours when we booked this call. It was probably a few weeks ago and we didn't know where things were going, but now we know that gyms are about to open. Um, as of next week, we're going to start to see an ease on restriction. Things are going to start to go back to normal and it wasn't as bad as what we thought. So, if you let that fear hold you back, then I believe that you could have missed out on an opportunity, although it's not too late because we're about to restart. We're about to uh, begin almost as, as normal again. And the people that adapt out of this, it's not gonna be the same environment for sure. It's not gonna be the same environment. People are definitely gonna be cautious. There's gonna be things to look out for, but it really is a chance for you guys to step up to make the most out of it and um, yeah, really show people what you can do. So I think that's it. I think that that's all I have to share for you guys. Jules, Robbie, thanks for having me on. Anyway, Brendo, Perth Fit Fam, Fit Fam Finder. Good luck next week to all you gym owners.